my name is Katia and today on internet style we will be taking inspiration from the grunge aesthetic which is basically where the modern e-girl and e-boy aesthetics originate. They borrow very heavily from elements of grunge fashion. Grunge has been around since the 1980s mainly due to the popularization of the grunge genre of music at the time. The style was the trendiest during the 90s and ever since the re-emergence of 90s trends in the recent years, grunge fashion found its way onto the internet, specifically the blogging platform Tumblr where it became a deeply rooted part of today's pop culture. So that more modern grunge aesthetic is what I'll be discussing in this video as opposed to the older original grunge style since this series focuses mainly on aesthetic fashion, specifically on the internet. So today I've partnered up with Etta Love to style some grunge inspired outfits and give away a $500 gift card to their website. If you're not familiar with the brand, Etta Love is the sister brand of Clocks and Colors, which is a jewelry company based in Canada. All their pieces are handmade and carved from sterling silver by master artisans. They have a beautiful selection of intricate grunge tarot inspired rings, necklaces, earrings, and the like. So to win the $500 gift card, all you have to do is watch this video till the end so you can see all the outfits and then comment which look was your favorite down below. Then click the link in my description to subscribe to Etta Love's mailing list and that's it, you're entered into the giveaway. But even if you don't win, everybody who subscribes to the mailing list gets a $25 gift card sent to their email automatically. So don't forget to leave that comment and click the link in my description. But with that being said, let's get back to the topic at hand. The most common themes of the grunge aesthetic include dark and rugged elements. This means the colors are darker and the textures are rougher. Layering is also a heavy motif in this aesthetic, specifically referring to layering multiple tops over one another, but also in terms of mixing various textures and patterns. Oversized silhouettes are incorporated into most outfits, specifically in terms of tops and outerwear. The most common color we see in grunge is black, but gray, white, and red are also styled quite often. Other dull and desaturated colors like burgundy, mustard yellow, and emerald green also make appearances, usually as accents. The fabrics and patterns we see in grunge, like I mentioned, are edgy in some way, so this includes denim, usually black denim, but in general denim is a core fabric in grunge. We often see distressed dressing or rips, again mostly in denim, but this also shows up in other fabrics. Leather is another common element along with plaid, checkered, and striped patterns. Black or white lace and mesh elements are used for layering, and we also see chains and studs incorporated into most clothing and accessories. In terms of tops, oversized graphic t-shirts, specifically band tees for grunge bands like Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, My Chemical Romance, and etc. are common. They're usually layered over turtlenecks or under bodysuits and dresses. Mesh and fishnet long sleeve tops are often used as a base for layering as well. As for bottoms, both wide leg and skinny jeans are seen in the grunge aesthetic, but more often Often than not, they are distressed. These pants usually come in black denim, but light wash and acid wash are also pretty common. Cargo or otherwise wide leg pants also make appearances, mainly in the plaid pattern along with black shorts. Tennis skirts are the other most popular bottoms, specifically in the plaid pattern or in the color black, but we do see other A-line knitting maxi and pencil skirts pop up as well. Dresses are not as common as the top and pants or top and skirt combo, but if they do appear, it'll usually be as an oversized graphic band tee worn as a dress, cinched in with a belt, a corseted or otherwise fitted A-line silhouette mini dress, or as a layering piece such as over a long sleeve top or under a band tee. For outerwear, denim jackets, flannels, zip-up hoodies, crewnecks, and cardigans all fall into the grunge category as long as they're oversized and dark in color. Shoes are often black with silver accents and usually have platform heels, so we mainly see boots, specifically knee-high platform boots, but Vans and Converse among other black sneakers also pop up in this aesthetic. Accessories include fingerless gloves and arm warmers, specifically in fishnet material, along with belts featuring studs and chains. Fishnet ripped and cross skull or otherwise patterned tights are the most common, but as are patterned socks, sometimes in combination with these tights, but usually in a striped pattern or sometimes mismatched in color or length. Beanies and bandanas are the ideal grunge headwear, and harnesses as well as garters are also common, usually in combination with the aforementioned accessories. As for jewelry, grunge outfits include lots of it, usually layered. Most of it is either silver or black, as the majority of jewelry tends to be either chains or chokers, and piercings, specifically those on the face, are also definitive of the grunge aesthetic, and this includes fake piercings as well. 
So I tried to boil all this information down into three trendy outfits. Everything I wear will be linked in the description along with my favorite Etta Love jewelry pieces. The ones I chose to style with all my outfits today include the Live by the Sword earrings, the Snake Bite necklace, the Spitfire necklace, the Turquoise Hellcat ring, and the Rosy Disposition ring. So starting off with the first outfit, I chose to style this red marble tee with a simple black midi dress layered on top, and I wrapped this matching red and black flannel around my waist. Now I don't really listen to grunge music so I didn't have any band tees that fall within that specific category but I do think that any artist or band tee could work in this case as long as it has a darker color scheme and an edgy logo. That's why I picked this red black bear t-shirt. I think it has a similar vibe to the graphic tees you would see in the grunge aesthetic plus it serves as a good base for the outfit because of the color scheme. I chose to layer my dress over my band tee but dresses and skirts are layered under band tees in the grunge aesthetic as well so that is an alternative if you think that looks better or if it's more comfortable for you. For shoes, I went with my black knee-high lace-up platform boots. These are the perfect grunge shoe in my opinion. They incorporate a lot of the elements that we see in the grunge aesthetic, such as the color black, leather, silver hardware, along with an overall edgy appearance. However, these are easily replaceable with any sort of black boot, whether that be a combat boot or even Doc Martens. As for accessories, I kept it all within the theme with this simple black handbag that has a silver chain detail, some fishnet fingerless gloves, and three red and black barrettes. I think fingerless gloves are an easy, cheap way to step up the outfit and make it a little bit more grunge. I got mine on Amazon for like $7, but even if you don't have them, you can replace them with a black bracelet or cuff on either arm. This will have a similar effect. I kept the silver accents consistent with my jewelry, including the snake bite and spitfire necklaces. The more necklaces you layer on, the better. The snake bite necklace also matches the snake on the logo of my band tee, so I think it makes the outfit look a little bit more cohesive. But most of my jewelry incorporates hearts, roses, and thorns, three things that are very commonly seen in the grunge aesthetic. outfit I wanted to provide an option for those of you who are more comfortable with wearing pants which is why I picked these black distressed skinny jeans to base my outfit around. I paired them with this simple black turtleneck and a black lace bodysuit on top. Even though they're the same color the difference between the texture of the two tops I think makes the outfit a little bit more interesting while keeping the overall look cohesive. But if you're not comfortable with this specific pairing, you could choose to incorporate mesh or lace through other elements such as gloves, socks, or even tights that peek out the distressing of the jeans. The oversized flannel is very common in the grunge aesthetic, so I threw over this yellow one, and to match it, I also wore this black beanie with a smiley decal. If you don't have a flannel, any oversized denim or leather jacket could be an adequate substitute. For a bit more color coordination, I wore some mustard yellow socks and black docks with yellow stitching. Although black boots are the most common shoe in the grunge aesthetic, old school Vans and Converse could serve as a viable alternative, especially in the context of this particular look. The sterling silver jewelry also matches the hardware of the belt I chose to add. If you have a black stud belt or even one of those wide black belts with the silver grommets in them, those would work perfectly with this outfit as well. I think the Live by the Sword earrings and the Spitfire necklace are very grunge, and the fact that they both incorporate daggers makes the look a bit more cohesive. outfit I went for more of a feminine silhouette because even though the grunge aesthetic is characterized by more masculine elements, the juxtaposition of those with daintier pieces is also pretty common, much like in the e-girl aesthetic. So I chose to style this navy plaid skirt with a simple black milkmaid blouse and a lace bralette underneath. To match that, I wrapped a lace ribbon around my head to act as a headband. I think this subtle addition of lace complements the more edgier accessories like the fingerless gloves and the fishnet tights. However, you could opt for a more conservative top layering by replacing the blouse with a t-shirt and layering on a turtleneck underneath. I again went with those same knee-high boots and the layered silver jewelry. I think the Hellcat ring is more masculine while the rosy disposition ring is more feminine, so that juxtaposition leads them to complement each other, much like the lace and fishnet elements in the rest of the outfit. 
to dress grunge but you don't have any of the items I mentioned specifically, you can never go wrong with an all black outfit. You can also try layering red, white, or gray pieces over top or underneath and the more layers you have the better. Once you have that base, you can just layer on a bunch of silver jewelry, a lot of which you can find on etalove.com. Don't forget to comment your favorite look from 1 through 3 and click the link in my description to join the $500 Etta Love gift card giveaway. If you're interested in dressing in more grunge inspired styles, make sure you check out this video about the e-girl aesthetic next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like and subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!